Foo Fighters, best of you on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Alright. Alright? Carl's had a bad week. I'm gonna say that straight away. It's, there's a, it's a, it's, he tries to rule out stress in his life. Yeah. But he's had a bit too much stress this week, haven't you? One, a phone call from his mum, stressed him a little bit. Right. Um, something he said in a magazine about his auntie. Okay. Came back to haunt him. Auntie Nora? Uh, auntie Nora, yeah. yeah. Don't name her. Uh, oh, she no, knows who she is. No, no. Okay, we won't name her, right? We'll just say it's the, it's the one who fights for five minutes and as, um, he saw a skirt when he was young and a fanny like a split tennis so ball. it could be any of me aunties. <laughs> <laughs> that coming up, and also a bloke um, in Times Online, um, Chris Campling, yeah. did a review of the show, right, and basically said that Carl Pilkington is a creation of Gervais and Merchant. Well, if only that were the case. He, he said um, he started off saying he liked the show. Yeah, he was excited. Said it was a good show. Um, a lot of the uh, jokes. I'm already I'm already questioning his critical faculties. <laughs> Exactly, and uh, basically said that um, uh, we didn't contribute much, or seemingly didn't seem to contribute much, and, sure. I, and we we couldn't sort of like uh, ad lib or anything. We just laughed at, uh, particularly me, uh, laughed at um, Carl Pilkington, who was coming up with some you know quite funny stuff. Right? Yeah. But then he does a twist on it. He goes, but the thing is, we're the puppet masters. He's a created person. We've created the uh, um, persona Carl Pilkington for our own amusement. Right. He bases this. On simply that we talked about, what was it we talked about? Um, the Chinese not aging well, and right. I heard him talk about that on my DVD. But clearly I, I say, Carl, remember when you were talking about that? It's a news, or oh, remember in the week, and so he thinks it's all scripted now. Imagine if this show was scripted. I'd be ashamed. Yeah. If this show was scripted, I would <laughs> send back the BAFTAs for the shows we've, the actual shows we've written, and I would and say- I'm having a go at Chris Campling, he's, he's nice about our other work, he likes The Office, and yeah. he likes my stand-up and everything, and he likes the show, but he's saying, because we, we're not spontaneous, we, we scripted this and invented Carl. It, so he's, he's like, you know, we, we've invented another Gareth. If we had created Carl, I would, I would not have squandered a character that good on this poxy radio station. Absolutely. Also, does he know that we spend about three months on half an hour script? So how long does two hours of dribble? But the main thing is, as if this could be scripted. It's dreadful. <laughs> it's just shocking. Or maybe this is scripted. Hang on, you've, you've lost me now. Did we just well, check maybe, the maybe Chris Campling does not exist. Uh, maybe I've made him up. I don't know what to believe. See, the name, the name doesn't wash with me. What was his name? Chris Campling. Sounds sounds odd. That's something that I made up, isn't Campling's it? Campling's almost like it's almost like a joke. It's almost like a gay name, isn't it? Or see, he's I, a Campling. See, I think this is scripted. Yeah. I think I've probably made this whole link up. And Carl is a creation. Campling, that's not a real name. Yeah. I made it I should have come up with something better. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. By Bruce Springsteen on XFM, one oh four point nine. So, uh, yeah, that little fella in the Times thought Carl was just a puppet. That we created him, he's an actor. <laughs> What's, the, what was his, what's his act, what's his actor's name? Um, Brent Hogwell. <laughs> we, yeah, we got him from, we got him from, uh, a spotlight. Yeah. Brent Hogwell. This uh, stupid, dopey, mancunian accent, he just puts that on every <laughs> yeah, week. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, he speaks well like Hugh Grant. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, we just, uh, his whole world around him, we set a whole, what do you think about so that? He had his head shaved, <laughs> suddenly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, yeah, does he, would he think that, you know, maybe if he's looked online and seen me Ed, and he's noticed how round it is and that, <laughs> does he think it's sort of been, Sort of, you know, morphed into that <laughs> shape just for the show, just for two hours on a Saturday. <laughs> yeah, you would spend five <laughs> hours in prosthetic makeup like John Hurt in The Elephant Man. <laughs> <laughs> Everything oh, about him was made up. Yeah, we created him. We created. Well, oh, because I remember coming up with Auntie Nora. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. said Rick, we need another character. I said, what about giving him an Auntie Nora? Doesn't sound convincing. I said. Yeah, and you said, what is it about? I said, well, I don't know. Um, she fighted for five minutes, and she's got a fanny like her split tennis ball. <laughs> no one's gonna believe that. Yeah. Oh, that brings us neatly. Well, let's put that to bed now. So, Chris Campling, honestly, honestly, we do not script this shambles of a show, and Carl Pilkington really is like this. If you want, we you can meet him. We, I, I'd love to send Carl for a drink with Chris Campling. Can we do that? <laughs> and then he'll eat his words. Chris, if you're listening, honestly, this isn't a stitch up. As I say, I'm not having a go at you. It's a very well written article. Um, uh, it's very, very fair. <laughs> you're just that. complimenting on, on his grammar. Yeah. He's a very well no, no, I'm saying we're not having a go. He's, it's not like he snagged us off. He's just, I would just love him to meet Carl Pilkington. People in the street come up to me and say, is Carl like that? And I, I so want them to meet him. Yeah. Um, or, or maybe he can send in, if he's online, um, he can send in five subjects for Carl to talk about that we couldn't possibly know about. Just so he knows that we just really do throw things at Carl and that drivel comes out. Imagine if it was scripted. 
But anyway, so Chris Campling, or anyone who knows Chris online, get him to email us and with five <laughs> subjects that Carl can talk about. It's a good idea, isn't it, Carl? It is like, I'm the elephant man the way I'm being treated now. <laughs> Just sort of like I, I scripted that. I wrote that joke last night. Mm, are you sure? Is it, or was it yours? I don't know. I Carl, can't Carl enters and says, "I'm like the elephant man." Hang on, let me just check the credits on the script. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, though, Steve, that I found out about the elephant man. I was talking to Ricky. What? You know, the only bit that's that was normal on him. Oh yeah, no, it's, uh, it was in the film. You know right. the bit in the film. I was watching it one day. It was on, and I said, "Look, your favourite film's on." And it came to the bit where um, he was being exhibited. Uh, and he was naked behind the screen to all the doctors. Go on, what did you say? And there's a bit where he goes, um, uh, and strangely, um, the only thing that is normal are his genitals. They're untouched by this disease. They are totally normal. Right, what did you say? It's a bit annoying, isn't it? <laughs> it's like the only bit that you'd want as an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> the only bit he'd want that sure, was like, was an, like elephant. an elephant. Yeah, no, yeah. I can tell. <laughs> he said, and he got the head. <laughs> <laughs> so, so other stressful things. So, so anyway, you're. What, what's the anti Nora thing? Sorry, I should. Anti X. Anti X. What did she. Yeah. What, why is she upset? Well, he mentioned her in Zoo. He did, did this uh, thing for Zoo magazine, and he, and he mentioned about when he looked up her dress, it. Um, oh, it she had a. Yeah, what? By accident, remember. <laughs> You were going around looking up your elderly relatives' dresses in case they for weren't people, wearing- For people who've not heard Carl talk about this in the past, yeah. just explain quickly again yeah, what we're talking yeah. about. Right. <laughs> um... <laughs> it's, I didn't want to talk about it at all! When I was a kid, right, Auntie Nora used to come around- uh, Me auntie used to come around- <laughs> As if there's any ambiguity now! Yeah. Me auntie used to come around and that, and stay, right? And I, uh, I, I'm sat on the floor watching the telly, <laughs> right? She sat on the sofa with a caftan on. <laughs> I turn round, right, and it's it was it was there. It was looking back, back at me, right, and we've we've mentioned this, and I just Ricky sort of said, "What did it look like?" <laughs> and you know, a split tennis ball came to mind. That's what we talked about, right? So anyway, Zoo magazine when they did the interview. And she's the one that used to put a valance on everything, isn't it? Well, not everything, obviously. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so I've done this. So you did an interview in Zoo. Yeah. And, uh, and like they said, you know, do you, again, it was like, you know, do you plan stuff and, and do you worry about stuff when, uh, you, after you've done the show, you're worried you've upset anyone? And, you know, I was saying, uh, really, I forget people are listening. Uh, and, you know, we're just having a chat with mates and that. I said, but now and again, I do worry, uh, when I'm on my way home from the show and that, and I'm thinking about what we've talked about. And I was saying, you know, the Aunt Nora in oh, <laughs> Aunt Nora <laughs> in incident. Yeah. Uh, incident. You know, and water guy. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so this was in there, right? And I, and I was saying in the magazine, you know, but I think I got away with it. She doesn't doesn't listen to the show, but you know, and I don't think she reads Zoo magazine, so <laughs> she's more of a nuts <laughs> woman. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so my mum calls up oh, the, other, uh, the other week, right? Mm. And she goes. Uh, uh, wish you wouldn't, you know, talk about Aunt Nora and that. And, uh, I was like, oh, so how do you know about that? She goes, well, one of your cousins have called us up and said they've, they've read the article, you know, the article about it. So, uh, so yeah, that's why we don't want to talk about it, really. So he's, oh, he stitched you up. Hmm. So do you know what Auntie X has made of this? Do you know if she was upset or not? Uh, well, she doesn't, doesn't know about it. Cause, she, I mean, maybe she, maybe she, she's always thought it looked like a split tennis ball. <laughs> Maybe you're just in sync, you know, because you're relatives and stuff. Maybe she knew instantly. Even if you hadn't named her, she'd have thought, hang on, so I farted for five minutes once. Yeah, that's not really ambiguous, well is it? It could well be me. If you hear like, someone who farted for five minutes and's got a, a, a fan of, like a split tennis ball, you're gonna go, I wonder if he means me. Yeah. You're gonna remember or that. Or Andy Jackie. Is it, it could be Andy Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and he got in trouble, you know, last week when he was going to the wedding? Let's, like, let's talk about that a bit. Okay. <laughs> So, Carl, you were going to a wedding last week. Was it last week or the week before? No, it was last Saturday, right? Like. Yeah. And he went, he said, uh, looking forward to it, he went, now it's gonna be boring. Suzanne was listening, knows that the, uh, the couple, uh, were taping the show, so she had to get in there before you, didn't she? She went up to him and said, look, when he, you wish him back to the show and he says it's gonna be boring, he didn't mean you, he meant weddings in general. I love the fact she has to run around and clean up after him. It's <laughs> great, isn't it? How was it? Do you not like weddings? You're not a fan of them? Uh, they're only good for the for the people involved, aren't they? 
What are you talking about? You're getting free food, free booze, free music? Yeah, but it's not, it's just all the hanging about and there's loads of people there you don't know. Absolutely, I agree. Do you know what I mean? You, you've got to make an effort. And yeah. You, and, uh, even the bit that was important, right, when they were getting married, right, there wasn't enough chairs, chairs, because it was, you know, all the family gets the chairs, don't they? So I was sort of stood at the back. <laughs> <laughs> stood at the back of that watching and, uh, I couldn't hear what was going on. Because a woman was breastfeeding the baby. Oh! But what? What? How loud was this baby? Because no <laughs> way, you couldn't hear what was going on. Yeah, so it was, it was it was slurping and that, and it, she, she was like, I, I just thought, how hungry <laughs> is it? Could it not have waited? Because you've all got to wait for the buffet or whatever That's later. I know. But also just in this. Well, there was two, out. wasn't there? Why didn't you? Why didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> The only thing that annoys me with weddings is the gift, is the gift thing. Cause like, you buy these gifts, right, you spend a little bit of money, maybe, you know, I, I like to be a little bit lavish if I go into a wedding. Oh. Uh, well, no, come on, you get a gift, right, you package you're it out. Off. And I don't know about you, Rick, but you, I like to see the response. When I give a gift to someone, I want to, I want to see that, the feedback from that, you yeah. know, this is very much, you know, I, I want to see what it is that's Jane bought them on, on, you know, <laughs> yeah, and exactly. put my name to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, sometimes I have to, oh, thanks for the, I go, oh, no worries, <laughs> no worries, yeah. no worries. Yeah. But, you know, certainly, I mean, we talked about it before, but certainly, you know, it's the, the amount of, the amount of money spent and the amount of time given to the gift should be correlated by the amount of the response you get. Absolutely. If I give a book token, a shrug is fine. <laughs> <laughs> but if I give, you know, a sizable, I want kind of, I want them to be showing it to friends. If it's a bar, I want them to show yeah. it to barman. You, you want to go, look what Steve Merchant got me. Yeah. He's the greatest man in the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You go to a wedding, you turn up with a gift, you could have spent, you know, upwards of 15 pounds on it. <laughs> you turn up, you walk in, you say, excuse me, where's the bride and groom? I want to give them this gift. And some bloke, Normally the brother-in-law says, oh, yeah. no, 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 brother-in-law's no. mate. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. They're too busy to see you right now. Just stick the gift on this big table with all the other ones. Yeah. And, um, they'll get back to you. In a week. It may be six to eight weeks after the honeymoon. They may be write you a note. They won't thank you personally, they'll write you a note. It'll be a general thank you. It's a general thank you. Your name in different type. <laughs> yeah, but it might have some vague reference to, you know, to yeah. what you did, but it won't yeah. really be personalised. Yeah. The set of mugs again will be in different types. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Steve Merchant, <laughs> yeah. for your wonderful gift. We uh, we love mugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yours, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, a, and a photocopied signature. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, no, it's not right, is it? Oh dear. And, in, and also, uh, of course, as well, if there's uh, and if there's a baby involved, you know, perhaps they, you know, they they had a kid out of wedlock, what and that's mean? where they're getting married. There's normally the little baby signature as well. Oh. Like, oh, I, I like the baby signed it. Oh. From Paul and Sharon. And little Billy. <laughs> <laughs> be Ben. Be Ben, ben these days. Ben. I reckon. Yeah. What do you think, uh, Karma? What's the wedding, by the way? Did you buy it? Um, Suzanne sorted something out. Yeah. What? Um, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, actually, no, we, we're going away. I'm in a week away with them. But that's, that's, that's your gift? Yeah. What are you going away? No, we're going away to Cornwall or something. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's it. We've, we, we, we've sort of paid for the, for a place to stay in there, coming along and that. And their gift is to spend a week with you in a s confined space. They love it. They'll, they'll have a great time and that. Will they? Yeah, it's fine. Can yeah. I, sorry, can I get a pen? I'm making a note of how many times you say, and that, during today's show. And so far there's three. I've noticed three. I'm just gonna, can I just make a note of it? Because I think we can have a competition here. And <laughs> if times. you can predict how many times he's gonna say, and that, mm -hmm. the closest one wins um, some of the crap DVDs that we've got on offer. Hold we've on, tell me, tell me we've got a lad of 49. Definitely. <laughs> We've had an email, Rick, from Simon Whitaker. He says, uh, he's throwing the question to Carl. Have you seen the video for that Ben Fold song where there's apparently a monkey working the sound desk and shifting the piano? I'm so, uh, yeah, you want to check that out. Talking of monkeys, um, working the sound desk. <laughs> um, we've also had a lot of emails directed Smooth. at you. Yeah. A lot of emails directed at you, Carl, asking if you saw this program that was on in the week. The, I, no, I think, I didn't see it. I think I it was know, called I know the, the Strangest, the strangest yeah. Village in Britain. Yeah. Yeah. Did he watch it? He called me six times during it. <laughs> of he called did. me six times. Erida. Now, just explain briefly what this was, because I didn't see it. Well, it was um, uh, a sort of a, an experiment. Um, for, I think oh, I can work out from the sort of seventies, um, and it's it was sort of run by, from what I can make out, mainly sort of German uh, Christians. Right. And um, what it was, it was um, uh, people with various disabilities, or mental illnesses, uh, Down syndrome. Uh, uh, autism, b bewildered, you know, and, and they were living normally in the community. And there was 300 people in the village, half, um, had some sort of, uh, um, problem, mental problem or, or disability, and the other half were sort of carers. And, uh, um, 
I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was very, very strange. And where is this village? Uh, it's, it's somewhere up, in this village. It's up near Yorkshire. Whitby, isn't it? Yorkshire, right. Yeah. Okay. But he called me. Uh, he called me at various points. You watching that? Uh, it just started off. He, he went, "Geez, if that's the beginning, what have they got coming up?" <laughs> then there was two fellas, and it, 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 the phone rang, and it went, "What is going on?" And it was two um, blokes who had created their own language, <laughs> okay. and they are going, "What do you know?" And you go, "What do we do?" And what? It, it, you know, it was an interesting program. I love documentaries like that. But what made it twice as good was that I knew that Carl was getting confused. Yeah, he was get. There was one bloke that went round interviewing people, and he just have a string of questions, and he go, "Have you had, ever had curly hair? What's your favourite animal? Have you ever seen a badger?" All uh, right, and um, Carl was getting stressed. It was stressing me out. Cause he was trying to think of the answers quickly enough. <laughs> was that, yeah, he was sort of saying, you know, uh, do you like? Mosaics and that, and I was like, oh, I do it. And, and the next question was coming in. It was like, it was like Malik's mallet. You know, that sort of <laughs> that word association thing. It was just, yeah. I was stressing yeah. out. But he said he wanted to go there. He actually said, oh, "Could I go for a holiday there?" And I went, "Well, I, I doubt that. I don't know. Maybe you could go on a a visit." You know, oh, that that would be great, wouldn't it? To for Carl to walk in there. But the thing about it, it would be like, Carl would be the ruler. He'd be the king. It would be that, in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. I mean, he would just die. I don't know. Us. There was some of them were quite clever. Really? Yeah, yeah. I don't think he'd- I don't- I, I think he'd probably be average. Yeah. I, don't th I don't think he'd- <laughs> okay, he'd just come I mean, in. No, I don't- I don't think he'd shine. <laughs> yeah. Cos a lot of them were quite good at some things, weren't they? He didn't like the, um, the angry bloke who punched him. There was a, um, this really sort of sweet Down Syndrome woman called Nan. And, um, uh, she hadn't hung her coat up, and this angry, um, bloke was going, if you don't hang your coat up, I will. And he punched her, didn't he? Yeah. And yeah, poor yeah. Nan got it in the f neck from everyone. There was another woman bullying her, wasn't he? That, yeah. Uh, yeah. But you like the little, um, the, 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 the little dancing to a fellow with a woolly yeah, hat who was, was helping right. that if woman. If I went there, he's the one who had sort of hunt down and so, come on, let's go for a pint or something. Sure. <laughs> but, uh. Incidentally, do you like mosaics? We didn't establish that. Uh. <laughs> he's still thinking about it. <laughs> What was his oh, name, that one, that you, that, that you liked and you wanted to hang around with? What was his name? Uh, uh, I can't remember. I can't he was good, I liked him, he was nice, wasn't he? Yeah. He yeah. He's the one that fell over then, and then, um, proposed marriage <laughs> to that woman, didn't he? Yeah. I remember, um, I was on a, I don't know if this is alright to talk about, I mean, it happened, so, you know, not worry about it. Right it. Everything's but, all right to talk about. Everything's all right to talk about. But I was on the train, right, uh, coming from Manchester back to London, right? Yeah. And, uh, got on it, it was like a Friday night, and it was heaving, you know, like the, the, the last train is and all that. And, um, absolutely chocker. Right? Yeah. So I'm walking through the carriages, <laughs> thinking, oh, is he in his seats anyway? Is he, is he? Anyway, everyone's like, it's, it's heaving, right? It's people stood up in the doorways, you can't get in the toilet and all that. There's not gonna be any chair knocking about. You know, so walking through, and anyway, I see this one empty chair sort of in front of me, right? Think, oh, why ain't anyone sat there? Right, I'll just rush to that, get to that, I'll get myself a seat, plonk myself down, right, and uh, sort of turn round, you know, s see who I'm facing, you know, see who you're sort of having a chat with. Little fella there, right, <laughs> little, uh, well, Down syndrome kid, right, right. sat there, and uh, he goes, all right, and I thought, oh. Right, not not bad, but do you, do you know what I mean? They're always talking, aren't they? They ask a lot of questions, <laughs> right? So I was like, oh, here we go, two and a half hours, and I couldn't get up because the thing is, that's obvious. Sure. Right. So that's that's like mean. I don't. I, I never want to be mean. Do you know what I mean? No. At the end of the day. So um. So anyway, so I think I know. I'll go to sleep. <laughs> Clever. Right. So I shut my eyes, and he leaves me alone, and that. So uh, so then my phone goes, and I think, right, what do I do? Do I ignore it? <laughs> Or do I open my eyes and see who it is? Anyway, I open my eyes, it's Ricky calling about something. About nothing, probably, actually, thinking about it. It wasn't even worth answering, right? <laughs> so anyway, but I'm awake then, aren't I? So he's like, hello. And I'm like, all right, mate. And he says, uh, he says, you're muscly. <laughs> oh, God! And, uh, right, yeah. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, uh, you know, why? <laughs> so I said, I don't know, just, just stand. It was, again, stressing me out, because we're thinking, why am I, why am I muscly? I don't go to the gym. And, you know, I've, I mean, I'm not muscly, I'm in good shape and that. Well. So, uh, so then, uh, he wants an arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> On a crammed train from Manchester, so I've got another hour and a half of this. 
<laughs> when so, you talk back, he'd soon have got up and left. <laughs> if you'd have started asking him questions, he'd have got up and left with a drivel you come out with. So anyway, uh, <sighs> do you know when you're under pressure, you're thinking, well, he's said that I'm muscly, you know? all right, so, do I do it or not? What, and there's people watching, you know, not joining in, not sort of having a laugh and that with me, just, just like, watching but pretending they're not. Oh, God. And I'm God. at one of those table seats, so, it, and he kept saying, come on, I want to arm wrestle. So, and he was getting loud, and I thought, oh, I best just have an arm wrestle. <laughs> What do you mean? I'm best just have an arm wrestle. Well, what do you mean? Done, get it over and done with. I had to. Uh, if he's going to keep asking, I had uh, another hour and a half on the train. Oh God. So anyway. Oh uh, my God. I'm, I'm thinking who won. Well, I'm, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm thinking were people putting bets on. It How was it working. It was stopped and just as well, really. Was it really stopped? Stopped? No, he, 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 was it no, 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 no. He, he sort of he was he was winning. I was struggling a bit, right? Yeah. And he was really like you know taking my arm down. And then he sort of let go and started laughing. And I thought, thank God he let go, because I would have made, you know what I mean? If I lost that, everyone's <laughs> in the train looking, and all the rest of it. <laughs> it's suddenly serious yeah. to him, he's got to win this. Anyway. Pilkington, Pilkington. But then he just, uh, then we were chatting about favourite food and that, he likes sausages. <laughs> and I said, you know, he said, do you like sausages? I said, yeah, they're alright, I like a bit of Chinese and that as well. And he was saying, oh, I can't have Chinese, not allowed Chinese. Why? Uh, don't know, he just said, uh, it's not allowed to have it. But, right. uh, but yeah, I had, had a good long chat about, about stuff and that, but... So you enjoyed it in the end? In the end, it was, it was alright, yeah, it's uh, just... What did you it's, mm, okay. No, but it's that thing, innit, it's, uh, it's, oh, it's when, it, whenever you're faced with something different, yeah. it's always awkward, isn't it, and that's the thing. You're talking about him now, are you? And, and I, I think I, I did alright, because everyone else was ignoring him, but yeah. I probably made his day pretty good. Yeah. We were I, bloke. I like the idea that that newlywed couple are probably thinking that's going to be a similar journey down to Cornwall. <laughs> Forever lost. I, uh, I was taken unawares because I was. I opened that um, that thing. What is it? The confectionery. Well, we were sort of doing it ironically, like people getting shameless plugs by giving us stuff. But then I opened it, and it's brilliant. It is brilliant. It's all retro stuff. It's got a curly whirly, a fountain, sherbet fountain. I've just been eating a drumstick that I didn't quite finish in time. It's got Brilliant. some of those little cola bottles. Uh, that's Hope and Greenwood and their confectionery, which are mm. they the perfect summer gift. Perhaps you've got to go to a wedding or a um, barbecue party. We've got some rubbish to give away now, haven't we? We have indeed, yeah. If only we hadn't opened that, we could have thrown that in the mix. But, I know, um, no, it's too good to give away. It's time for Rockbusters, uh, the quiz that no one looks forward to. And, um, <laughs> we've got, as usual, the bunch of, uh, CDs, uh, DVDs, I should say, which, um... Just tell me we have got another copy of Ladder 49. Ladder 49's right here. That's Brilliant. in the mix, yeah. How many did they send you? Joaquin Phoenix, John Travolta, Ladder 49, the movie that no one's seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've but never met anyone who's seen it. But is owned by every single XFM <laughs> listener. <laughs> exactly. Um, also in the mix, uh, as I said before, there we've got Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, right. um, which, um, if you haven't seen that on telly, I'd be very surprised. Uh, French and Saunders at the movie, the, uh, the best of all the French and Saunders movie spoofs, which is, I think, on TV every single night. Yeah. Um, it's a very gay giveaway so far, it's isn't it? Giveaway. Well, this got one, this one... 49, the people in uniform, you've got Queen of the Desert and French and Saunders, well, the gays love them. You know how much a fellow of, of uh, Chevy Chase, you know I love Chevy Chase. Yeah. Well, uh, we've also got here National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation 2, which doesn't feature Chevy Chase. <laughs> it was so bad, <laughs> even Chevy wouldn't agree to be in it, so instead Randy Quaid, who plays cousin Eddie, it's him. Right. And on the back I notice it says, special appearance by Eric Idle. Brilliant. I mean, let's be honest, if a film's got a special appearance by Eric Idle, <laughs> I know. it's probably not a classic, is what do I'm saying. Do you reckon they do, um, always walk on the, uh, walk on <laughs> the bright side so. of life? That's anyway, just... that's just some of the DVDs which you can win, and obviously the, the real reason you should enter is because you go forward to this big prize draw, um, which is in our last show, where you can win some actual quality. Um, yeah, a, a signed, uh, Matt Groening drawing. And if you can see him drawing that on rickygervais.com, it's uh, totally genuine. It's just there, him actually drawing it in front of your very eyes. Also, um, us, uh, made us, uh, flanimals, um, and a signed, um, uh, poster uh, by Nigel Tufnell, Christopher Guest. Sure. So, proper good prizes. Yep. So, th this is, uh, I think it should be the last one to get into it. Maybe next week, the four that we've got get down to two, maybe. And then we get them on the line in the last, uh, what do you think? Well, I'll be honest, I wish we'd thought it through. <laughs> 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 I don't know about you, but I wish you thought this Chris Campling, if you've got any ideas <laughs> yeah. to how this show could have run, see, we should have, we should have scripted this. What yeah. we said, we just said the go in a drawer, didn't we? Did we? So we yeah, we hadn't thought it through, though. Yeah, but we can't keep swapping and changing. Well, well we, we haven't done it yet. We can do what we want, yeah. 
We, you know how many BAFTAs we've won? We can do exactly what we want. High right? five. Well, listen. <laughs> Six. Right, well, let's, let's get down to business then. Let's <laughs> right, so Rob, let's just, uh, make, let's explain briefly what this quiz is for those that have only just started listening to the show. Um, basically- It's basically, uh, um, blockbusters. Well, you say that, Rick, but it's not, is it? I mean, that- blockbusters made sense. Yeah, this well, there's this thing, uh, Carl thinks this is a cryptic clue going, right, a fella is walking along and it- oh, look, there's the fish, what does that mean? D-trout no, sinners. Some, some, well, of them, I mean, some of them are hard because they've, they've dug them all out. Some of them are, are hard because they don't make sense. No, but they've dug them all out because they're gonna put them all on the website for people to play along with and they came to me for the answers and some of them are, are pretty tricky. I couldn't answer them. <laughs> so oh, right. I love that. Well, anyway, um, <laughs> the only man that can outwit himself. Right so, then. So the first one then, here we go. Uh, Why don't you borrow some land off Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel or Mr. Fletcher? All right. Why don't you borrow a little bit of land? Oh, it's changed already. Oh, already changed. Oh, already oh, changed. Mr. Boardman. Well, no, no, do it again and do it exactly the same each time. Do it again. Uh, why, uh, don't, why, do, why don't you borrow uh, some land off, off Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel or Mr. Fletcher if you, if you need a bit of it? <laughs> <laughs> what's changing? Okay, and what's right. the, what are the initials? Right, L.S. 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 That's a band or an artist. Who am I talking about? Hmm? Uh, second one. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm. Oh, I'm, I'm that's gonna. Uh, uh, that's right, he's got a sweet in his mouth. <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those uh, those seabirds over there. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those seabirds <laughs> over there. Well, just just those seabirds. It don't matter where they are. I'm gonna annoy them seabirds. I don't right? know what he's talking about anymore, Steve. <laughs> Honestly. B. B. B is the initial. I love the fact that he was fascinated by the strangest village in Britain, but the stories he's told us about where he comes from, there's him going around with two fellows with big heads, webbed feet, a little pigeon-chested bloke, uh, him on his grifter with Maggie pecking at him, his yeah. dad in the telephone box nicking groceries and a horse in the house next door. <laughs> I mean, how strange was his upbringing? Yeah. And him hanging from his satchel. To, uh, uh, unbelievable. There's Kill another free. woman who I remembered. Actually, I'll tell you later. Go on, right. what? what no, I'll tell you, tell you later about another woman who I remembered. What is this? Give us a, give, oh, come on, give us a teaser. It's just a woman who rode around on a three-wheeled bike with her husband in a basket. <laughs> right, I'll tell you that. Right, right. And, and the final, the you final. You get teasers like that no, on the other radio station. Head of a funeral service. Oh. Right, listen. <laughs> <laughs> right, the final clue. Uh, what the scouse fella said to the robber who he found in his house next to his vineyard. Oh Jesus! Right. <laughs> What? Again. Right, so what the Scouse fella said. Right, this is gonna be a pronunciation thing. To the robber he found in his house. Oh god, I've, I've lost his... the will to live. I have lo I, I, I wanna get in that woman's basket on the street, we'll just be driven round the, the rest of my life. The initials there, A W. A W. Who is it? Alright. Right. Well, Email in and that. Mm. Should we have also on the text 83XFM? You can win, um, Christmas, vac to get vac three. Christmas Vacation 2 and <laughs> Ladder 49. <laughs> <laughs> now. Coming up, Steve, and listeners, I'm, you know, then, you know, I'm talking to them mainly. I'm not really, I'm talking to you and Carl, really. Yeah. But, coming up, an old feature, Knob News. Oh, Knob News, the welcome return of Knob News. Yeah, and, uh, Monkey News is still there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just briefly, um, you don't think you really gave that, uh, competition justice, did you, not handing out the email? No, let's just quickly whiz through the questions again. Yeah. John's texted him, by the way, he says, I never get any of the Rockbusters clues. Is this a good or a bad thing? Definitely a good thing. Definitely a good Definitely thing. Definitely a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. All other people do. Well, First yeah. one, why don't you borrow a bit of land off, uh, Mr. Boardman or Mr. Laurel or even Mr. Fletcher? Right. right. L.S. Second one, I'm gonna annoy those seabirds. Right. B. And the last one, what the Scouse fella said to the robber he found in his house next to his vineyard. A W. If you know what they are, mm. email in or, or uh, text in. Tell us about the woman. What's the text? Quick. Well, well, eight three oh. nine three six on the text. Okay. Ricky dot at xfm dot uk on the email and that. Right and that. Right, I'm done. Make a note of that. And that. Right. Tell us about this woman. Well, it was just because you were saying about the you know our our. We are a... broadcasting now, aren't we? This is actually going out. This is live. This isn't us sort of like. Yeah, so but you you were just talking about how I lived in an odd village. Yeah, with kids with big heads and all that, right? And what I wanted to do. What is that again? The, there's two kids with big heads. Yeah, they they just had sort of big heads and uh, webbed hands and that. They went to school, <laughs> and 
I got when I spoke to my dad the other day because I'm going I'm going to see my mum and dad tomorrow. Oh yeah. So I said, oh, uh, have, have we got any school sort of school photographs with the uh, big headed kids in? <laughs> and he said, no, nah, no, nobody bought bought those sort of school photos because because they were in it, so it was always a bit ruined. <laughs> but I said, well, <laughs> no, no. He said they said sales were you know because he obviously talked to other dads and stuff like that. And he just said, oh, no one, no one bought them. But anyway, so- I would uh, love them! Yeah. That's why I'd buy them. Yeah, but I wouldn't stand out, would I? If it's on the mantelpiece. Well, yeah, well, uh, well. Mm. Um, so, but anyway, so I was talking about, you know- When you say they had big heads, what do you mean? Do they look like someone from Doctor Who? They were just quite, quite big. But they weren't related? No. So why did two blokes with big heads and webbed feet? I lived in a weird area. It was a was sort of a, a chemical plant close by. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you've never told us that before. That explains a lot. <laughs> Not just the freaks in your neighbourhood, but no, well, there, was weird, there was loads of weird stuff going on. Uh, there was this, like I said, there was this woman who uh, used to like live in one of the council flats, right? And uh, she had a three-wheeled, sort of big, what do you call son. it? <laughs> three-wheeled son. <laughs> he was the weirdest bloke we ever knew. What do you call it? Like a big tricycle, tricycle but for, a, for an adult rather than one for a kid. It yeah. was a big one. It wasn't a motorbike though, it was a- No, 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 it was a push bike thing. Right. Yeah. And she used to, uh, sort of ride down the road with a fella sat in the basket on the back <laughs> with his, like, legs dangling over and they'd be going to, like, the, like the pub and what have you. Was it a different fella each time or the same one? Yeah, <laughs> same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Old, sort of bald-headed fella. Sure it was in collection for, like, organs and things. And oh. Bring out your ill. <laughs> and then just, people just throw, Grandad just in the back and go, yeah. right, we're getting four quid for Grandad. But, but, but she's He's got quite... a lovely pair of testicles on him. They're very low, but they're extremely... Bring out your dead or nearly dead. <laughs> <laughs> she used to, uh, pick on her husband quite a lot. They'd be in the pub and what have you, and they'd be sat by themselves, but she'd always be sort of, you know, having a go at him, moaning at him, sort of pushing him about and that. So my dad and his mate, right, uh, they went round to their house, knocked on the door, she answered, and he said he, he said he was a copper, right? He said, you know, Detective, uh, Pilkington, gonna come in and have a word. Sorry, I'm just gonna make a note of impersonating <laughs> a police officer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but for, for, for the good, he went in and sort of said, <laughs> now, I've heard, oh, it's I've, heard, here, right? yeah. I've heard, I've heard, you know, you picking on your husband a lot, yeah. we'll be keeping an eye on you, do it again, and, uh, There'll be trouble. And she backed off after that. She That's was all good. right. And how was the husband? Did, 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 was he still in the basket though? Was he allowed to ever sort of like ride up front with her? Or was he just always no, in the basket? He just, uh, she'd sort of stop picking on him in, in public places and stuff. That's like good. That. Just you can't, you can't get done, can you, just for doing that? Um, I think impersonating a police officer. Well, you probably did. There, there was no gain. Um, I, I think you can't impersonate a police officer full stop. But I think they'd probably be lenient on him that he was. Uh, you know, but let's, let's face it. It's, you know, he's he's not going to be caught because why well, would anyone know? But it's not like his son's going to say it on a on a radio station, is it? And stitch him right up. Did he, is this something he did generally? Kind of a little bit of light vigilante work. <laughs> <laughs> just whatever. Him and his mate. Just you know, if they saw something going on, they go, "What can we do? Sure. What little scam can we do? Or whatever." <laughs> That's fantastic. But, that uh, is brilliant. Right. Okay. Uh, coming up, knob news and monkey news and monkey news. And the answers to Rockbusters. What a show. Uh, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant Carpet. I'm sorry, I was just enjoying You're that um, Hope and Greenwood confectionery. Lovely. I, thought, I wish I had something to uh, wash that down with, Rick. Well, won't you have a, a glass of um, lovely um, uh, Ban Rock Station red wine? Oh, lovely. It's barbecue friendly. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Um, good, so just keep sending stuff in. For free, free stuff, please. Good, free stuff. Good stuff. Um, Carl, oh. what are we talking? Oh. What are we doing? Oh, I've got something to tell you, actually. Um, you know we tease Steve about, um, not ever spending any money. Careful, I'm careful with money, I'm not- Yeah. Guess what? He's- he's treating it like, um, he's nurturing this, right? I, he keeps running off, right? In the edit, he's having a suit made, and he wants it to be just right, because I reckon he's forking out quite a lot. He's having a suit made. Think of that, yeah. him. Let me tell you this, though, I don't want you thinking that I'm getting all flash with my cash. Um, it's very hard to buy off the peg when you're six foot seven. So, you know, it was a necessity. Carl, I don't want you thinking that this is the beginning of some new phase. Well, is everything you buy sort of made to measure? Or? No, I'm afraid I w if only. If only I could afford it, mate. But, uh, no, I'm off the peg generally, but- So what, instance. like, properly done and that, just- Oh, no. yeah, 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 it's the full, it's the full, yeah, it's the full thing. The full works. Got to keep going back for fittings, they got that little bit of chalk, you know, the pins- where I had mine made, you know how good I look all the time. <laughs> Did you have to have that, uh, 
thing done where they say, um, what side do you, uh, do you wear your member? What side do you dress? They don't say what side do you wear your member. That would hardly be a euphemism, would it? So they say what side do you dress, sir? It means what side do you little poke your little, your little John Thomas leans, doesn't it, on a, on rest, usually to the left, isn't it? Your, your little left you testicles. Know, if I said to you now, what side do you wear, on? Do you uh, know? It would be left. It would be the left. That's what I mean. If, if uh, standing there, right, um, with n nothing restricting it or holding it in or holding it up, right, it sort of leans. The, your one ball is sort of like slightly back and lower, isn't it? And your your little John Thomas rests there, so it's left. And the reason they ask it is so they don't put the tape measure up on the left and squash your willy or touch your willy. So it's nothing to do with like, well, you'll need a bit more room, of sort of more material on that side, or. Uh, well, no, I don't think they, they compensate. It's just uh, when they put the w when they stick that up into your groin, they don't want to come in contact with um, with your. The thing is, I I don't know what side I, I wear stuff on. I just sort of pull my pants up and w wherever it wants to go that day. But maybe it's not big enough to sort of make any you know real decision. But like now, I'm sat here right with my jeans on. I don't know where I am. <laughs> Well, that's clear from you talk. <laughs> no, but what, but what I mean is, if a fella said to me, "What side do you, uh, what, you know, what side do you member on?" I'd member. Go, what is this? What is this? <laughs> the use of the word member suddenly? I, I'd go. I'd, I'd, well, it's not. It's usually not appropriate. And also, I imagine in the old days they had big baggy pants and used to sort of like hang down. And now, you know, like with those stretchy boxers and briefs, it's sort of held up in a nice little, neat little parcel, isn't it? So it's probably not appropriate. It doesn't come in contact with your little snake. So, <laughs> you know. Did you ever? Do, well, have you ever heard that? Have, have you, have, are you telling me a tailor has asked you that and you went, "What do you mean, mate?" No, no, I've never. Uh, I've not really had one made to measure. I had one made when I was a kid, but since then, I've sort of bought a suit off the hook. But I've, when you know, when you were saying about buying a suit, I know that question sort of crops up, and I don't know what the answer is. It just annoys me the way every. I don't know. There's no surprises anymore. Do you know what I mean? People know. What, what do you mean? He's gonna, he's gonna go, right, I'm gonna measure you now. Which side shall I measure? Go, well, pop that, go on, have a look. <laughs> right, there you go, oh, you got it. You what you know, but do you mean there's you... no surprises anymore? What are you talking about? Everything mean... you say is a surprise. Everything no, no, but, you say, what... every opinion you have no, but what... is a surprise to me. What I mean is, why aren't people just happy just to go, well, pff, depends, doesn't it? Just, I'll just pull the pants up wherever it wants to go, I'm happy. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> why is this such a big issue? <laughs> But Carl, when they ask you this question, they're not making a note of it somewhere. It's not statistical research <laughs> to find out what the kind of common leaning is. It's just, it's a question so he doesn't touch it when he's using his tape measure. Well, just be careful. But it, but he is being careful by asking the question. But what's, what's wrong with him touching it anyway if he's, I mean, it's only oh, like hello. a slight- <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But if he just sort of, you know, knocks it a little bit, you can just go, go. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again? To me, it's the same as the prostate thing. It's just uh, happening all over again. It's but the, the same... doctor doesn't go, oh, what, what, what side is your ass on, sir? Trying to avoid the ass. He kn he wants to go, he, he knows where your ass is and he's aiming for it and he wants to get it up there. He's aiming for it for a good cause. This little fella's going, well, I've got to measure his leg. I don't want to touch the knob. I'll just ask him, sir, do you mind uh, telling me where your cock is so I can avoid it? It's a big difference. But like I'm saying to you, I'd have to have a look first. To let him know. <laughs> I don't know where it is now. I don't know. It could be the left, could be the right. <laughs> Are you telling me you can't, you don't know where your knob is Without now? Without looking. Well, that would be, uh, how would you mean that without looking? How could. Well, you're saying it as if like. Should we have a guess? Well, have I'm, a look. Have a look and tell us where it is. And uh, what are you wearing? What sort of pants are you wearing? I've got my jeans on. But you've got pants on underneath them? Yeah. What are they? Briefs or uh, boxer shorts? Yeah. Boxer shorts. Boxer shorts. Well, it's probably free, but the jeans are probably stricken it. I probably, it's, I think it's probably uh, either in the middle, resting, resting, or just slightly to the left. Have a look, and we'll come. We we'll tell the we we'll tell the listeners after the break where where's Carl's knob? It's a good competition. <gasps> oh, brilliant. We've got to send this to the Sony Awards people. <laughs> <laughs> Run, Snow Patrol on XFM. Well, big question: Where was uh, Carl's knob? <laughs> That's what people have been hanging on for. <laughs> yeah, where was it? Well, I can't believe people have been texting in. Hey, <laughs> what guessing where it is? People saying, uh, "Is it in the middle? Is it in the left?" Uh, cost them ten p. <laughs> <laughs> cost them ten p to find out. Just wait. I'm going to give out the answer. You don't win anything, right? <laughs> right strike it lucky, right? Um, <laughs> Top, bottom or middle? Right. It's, uh, it was to the left. Oh, yeah. 
I went with the right. That's annoying. See, I, I thought it would be uh, to the left. If not, maybe if it was all scrunched up, sitting down on your lap right, it might just pop up to the middle. Just <laughs> pop out. Like, you know. Well, of. next week, we'll, uh, we'll be finding out where, uh, where, where yours is. Where's, right? where's, uh, Ricky's bar? <laughs> right then, which, uh, leads us nicely into... Knob News. Oh, it's the welcome return of Knob News. Right, okay, this is, it's very much like the news at tennis, isn't it? Mm. I do a, uh, I do a bong, or in this case a schlong, and, uh, he gives me the headlines, the big, the big, the, the knob news of the day. <laughs> the big, uh, where have you collected all this knob news? Was, was, the, was there a lot of knob news this week? It was, it was mental this week. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of stuff. The way it works, uh, you, you give us the, the, uh, the bong, yeah. I'll give you the headline. Okay. Steve decides which stories we're gonna talk about. And now on XFM, knob news. Schlong. Man grows knob on his arm. <laughs> <laughs> Schlong. Man gets doctors to make him a second knob. <laughs> Long. Turkish prisoners made hole in cell wall to produce third inmate. Long. <laughs> Doctors accidentally remove man's testicles. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, well, can I straight story. away? Can I straight away go for the accidental uh, removal of the testicles? <laughs> Well, it's happened before, I think. We've talked about that before. Well, how did they, oh, what, what did he go in? For, for a tonsil- uh, I, uh, um, what are they called? Tonsillectomy? And he was- he went in the wrong way. What are you talking about? How can they accidentally um, remove his testicles? It says, uh, and, uh, um, he didn't look at his folder, um, and the doctor said to the fella, oh, we've, uh, we've removed your testicles and we want you to take out your prostate gland. So, that's, that's what happened there. <laughs> there's, there's a story. This is what I mean, that's why I don't like going to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, doesn't it? Because the, all these sort of, uh, it's when they say things like, oh, it's just, we do loads of these operations. That's when they're not concentrating. Brilliant. Do you know what I mean? When they say it's procedure. That's like uh, be, having a boring job that you do every day when you're not going to be concentrating. <laughs> I prefer them to go, this is a tricky one, this. <laughs> I know what you mean! I sort of do know what you mean! But you watch TV programs about like, you know, removing someone's second head or whatever, mm. and it's like the best surgeons from all over the world. It's televised, they can't it's make a mistake. They can't go, we took his legs off by mistake. Whereas the fella who's having a prostate, it's like, oh, do you want to do it? I'm sick of doing that. Yeah. And they're probably doing a crossword whilst writing it. Of course they are. I've seen that actually that's in, in uh, operating theatres. They're doing a crossword. <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah. I was just examining some of the other knob news, Rick, a little bit more closely. Mm. Um, man gets doctors to make him a second penis. I'm sure yeah. we're all interested in what happened there. Yeah. A German who persuaded doctors to give him a second penis has lost his wife after he showed her the result. Uh, biker Michael Gruber lost his original penis in a motorbike accident and doctors built him a second one using a mixture of skin, bone and other tissues. Bone? Apparently, the, pe the penis worked so well that he was even able to father a child with his wife, Bianca. But Gruber was still not happy and asked doctors to repeat the operation and build him a better organ, to which they agreed. From his hospital bed, he said, I've got two penises, but no wife. I'm hoping when I get rid of one of the penises, I'll get her back. What do you mean? They, what, they, well, sorry, he had a, so he had two put on. What side does he wear? <laughs> so he's had both. So he's had three, then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is probably the thing that happened with Hitler, when he had one ball, but he'd, he had three at one point, didn't he? So he just kept one in the other ball, gave his mum one, and got <laughs> the other one. Man grows penis on his arm. I mean, why are people constantly losing, losing their penises around the world? I have no idea. But why I didn't realise it was a bit- What do you mean, why on the arm? It's just a graft, isn't it? Yeah, but put it on, like, your, your buttock or your, your side. Not- you can't wear a short sleeve shirt. <laughs> why do they- they've done that before. I don't understand it. Why not just graph it onto <laughs> the side of your leg or something where it's high up, close to where it should be? I don't know. To get it used to the environment. Like when you were like released a, like a, a duck into the wild. I've never, I've never understood that. If there's a doctor, again, you know, we had a doctor last time, there's someone who can let us know why they put it on the arm. So they can keep an eye on it, presumably. He's not, he's not going to work with this knob on his arm. He's probably in a hospital bed and under, under examination. Right. So it's, what, do you, what do you think? They pop the art knob on the arm. Say, come back in three weeks. What do you do, by the way? I'm a mechanic. Keep the knob. Keep the long sleeve shirt because the blokes go, "Why well, have you got a knob on your arm, mate? What are you talking about?" He doesn't go back to normal as a teacher, sir. What? What? What is it? Um, what is it, Simpkins? You got a knob on your arm? No, don't worry about that. Do your maths. What do you think this bloke's walking around with a big knob coming out of his arm? Why on the arm? So they can keep an eye on it. So it's not- But if he's in bed, just get him to not put any undies on or whatever and just have a little sly look at how, how it's going. Even in hospital, if you're in a shared, like, <laughs> little hospital room, people going, oh, I've had, you know, heart problems, what's, what's your problem? 
He's there with his arm out. <laughs> Got his knob up. Yeah, but I don't think it counts as indecent exposure when they're grafting a knob on your arm, sticking that out of the bed. <laughs> Imagine if he's driving, he's just got it out the window. <laughs> People driving by. Yeah. Oh, at the, at the end of the... is, is that bloke giving me the finger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the end of the man grows penis on his arm story, uh, it says, uh, a Moscow surgeon said the man will will be able to have sex in a few months. He said, w women will never suspect. <laughs> but you, what kind of a doctor talks like that? Yeah. I don't know, is this cock now, seriously. We, the birds will never know. He'll be able to go berserk. Yeah. They'll never realise he grew up on his arm. That is unbelievable. Will he have a little scar on his arm, do you think? Yeah. I just don't, I don't get it. Like I say, 83936 if, if there's a doctor out there. Or indeed if you've ever grown Or a tailor. A Right. Making you a shirt. What side do you wear your cock on, sir? My left arm. This is by the Rolling Stones on XFM 104.9. Well, uh, I think, uh, the listening public would have enjoyed knob news there. Oh. So, I, I mean, so you, you, there, was, there was a lot of knob news this week. I was surprised. You know, I would have thought it would be hard sometimes to get knob news together, but- I uh, would have thought it would have been part of a bigger news programme, but, I mean, I don't think we'd dedicate a whole, sort of, uh, you know, f like John Craven's news round. Yeah. A whole five minutes <laughs> to <laughs> yeah. knob related news. Yeah. It was there was other news, was there in the week at all? Uh, Carl, it wasn't just yeah. all knob related, you didn't just research. No, they're the ones that sort of stand out. <laughs> uh there was Christ on a crisp. Right, uh, what's that? That's that's obviously a, a crisp that someone vaguely thinks looks a bit like Robert Powell. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what a load of twaddle, yeah. Uh, there was a bloke who can uh, blow up balloons using his ears. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, okay. Just, yeah, uh, well, it's, 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 yeah, well, it's all connected, isn't it? That's, you know, just, you're just redirecting it, aren't you? Pointless, I mean, though, isn't it? It is pointless. No, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sort of downplaying it like it's no big deal, but it is pretty impressive. It's not. When was the last time you blew up a balloon? Oh, I don't know. That's what I mean. <laughs> it's not needed. It's not, it's not impressive. That's what I mean. That's why. But I you can say that about any form of sort of like bizarre entertainment. I, d I don't think you have to hang yourself from hooks, but a lot of people go and see Jim Rowe Circus. I mean, I wouldn't. I, 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 I don't see the. But would you go and see that? What, a man blowing up balloons? No. If, if it was a mate of mine, I'd go, do that thing you can do. I'd, you know, to, to, to a group of new friends, I'd go, right? Then I'd get on with it. You know, it's, it's, it, it, to me, it's, it's, it's below, um, a, a, an average card trick doing something like that. Apparently, though, he does make balloon animals with his penis, so, uh, <laughs> Which is right. pretty good, isn't it? Up with his ears, so. <laughs> it's always a snake. <laughs> so a snake. I go, yeah, well done. Back to Put the news. Right, right, now listen then. Uh, what about another feature we'd like doing? What? Song with a story. Okay, he's been working on this, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, has, not he? He's yeah. like a producer, isn't he? Yeah. But with a completely uh, round head. Just, just, you know, I was saying that, you were saying I don't like music, but I'm saying I do if I can hear what they're singing about. And there's a reason to sort of listen so is to the, it. Have you turned into fifties dad? <laughs> what is this? Uh, <laughs> no, but you know, it's like it's nice to have a song where you go, you know, I can't turn it off because I need to know where it ends. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's like, it's like <laughs> a mini, right? it's like, like a, a mini film. A he can't film. sit through a film unless it's got a grotesque in it. He can watch the Elephant Man because he's getting a glimpse of this. He's waiting to see the bloke's face. That's all he's waiting for, right? And so uh, three minutes is about as much as you can maintain his. Uh, well, uh, well, last week we did, uh, Babushka. Yeah. Uh, you know, that woman dressing up, mm. sort of tricking her husband, then it sort of backfires and that. Mm. Um, don't know how it ended properly, I don't know if they split up or whatever. But this week, <laughs> this week- There's no follow-up. Kate Bush isn't now penning the, the, the sequel. Mm. Right, go on then, what's this week? Pinball Wizard. Right, okay, what's the story there? Um, it's about this sort of deaf, dumb, blind kid. Right. Who's good at pinball? That's it. So I don't believe he would be good at pinball. But even if he is, it's a lot to give up, isn't it? Just for that. Well, he didn't give it up. No, but it's not like it's not like. Well, you can't even say to him, "Oh, you know, a lot of bad news and that." But you're good at pinball. It's just a bit, bit rubbish. I mean, does he even know he's playing pinball? <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's not hard. It's just moving the thing, isn't it? just hitting the buttons hard. Yeah. It's not like, you know, if he was good at Pac-Man or something, you go, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but- it Wouldn't scan, would it? <laughs> well, I mean, what, what were they thinking of? What were the Who thinking of when they wrote this? Well, let's have a listen to it. But, yeah. you see, now being he's a Pac-Man wizard- It kind of works. Yeah. He, um, he's deaf, dumb and blind, though. Yeah. That's pretty grim, isn't it? 
It's rubbish, isn't it? Well, don't say that. I mean, that's alright, I can't hear you. No, but it is, it is like, it's, it's just the worst, isn't it? I can't imagine what that would be like. It's pointless. I'm being a tapeworm or something, isn't it? It's just... <laughs> no, no, but uh, what I'm saying is what sort of a life is that? It's, it's horrible. It is a bit like being one of those creatures deep in the ocean. Well, look, look, look can I just, can I just answer your questions? It must be terrible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Job done. But would you want a song about it and, you know, is it, is good at pinball? But it's not a real person. We're too, I mean, well, we, we were getting on to the realms of well, people with disabilities, but he is not a bloke that existed they sang a song about. Well, listen to it. Anyway, let's- well, It's not a true story. I don't need to listen well, to let's it. Let's have a listen. Oh. Wizard, by The Who, a little song with a story there, about a little deaf, dumb and blind kid. Thoughts, Carl? I just, uh, it's depressing, like I say. Uh, I don't know why- Is he enjoying- is he enjoying playing the, the game? I don't know, let's get Pete Townsend on the phone. Carl, what are you talking about? I'm just trying Listen to Listen to the lyrics, right? Deaf, dumb, blind kid. He can't hear, uh, no bows and bells. He can't see any flashing lights. He plays by sense of smell. Now, I'm pretty sure that isn't a scientific document Pete Townsend is reading out there when he wrote this song. He's making it up. But I d but the thing is, with all songs or stories, there's got to be a little bit of realism to it. What, do you know what I mean? Why, why, why bother putting money in it? Just let him hit, hit the buttons if he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's a fair point. That is a fair point. That is a fair point. Yep. That is great. Yeah, oh, well, I think you've made Daltrey and Entwistle and the whole crew look fool, like fools. Yeah, they won't get fooled again. Yeah. Um, oh, nice. What are you supposed to do? I mean, of all the thing, I mean, it is horrible. We're not, like, having a go. This is what I always worry about when we play, but at the end of the day, that's what he's singing about, so we're not having a go. No. Well, and it's not a real person, it doesn't really exist. Uh, I say again, it's a fictional person playing pinball and always getting a replay. Okay? This what? fella's saying that he's good at pinball, he's played from Sorry to Bone, but if this little deaf and blind kid, he can't believe it. He cannot believe it. If you had to lose something, Steve, right? Uh. It wouldn't be money. <laughs> That's good enough. <laughs> your sight or your, uh, or your ears? What? That's too much, I can't decide. That's, uh, that's too painful. Sight or your ears? What about, what about you? <laughs> Intuitively it would be hearing, cos I, I couldn't- No, I, no, I think it's gotta be sight for me. Yeah. Well, you're always together, so that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, is it almost time? Well, I've got to ask Carl. I'm sorry, I've got to ask oh, Carl. Oh, sorry, go on. Go, uh, Carl, what would you rather be, deaf or blind? It, it, when does this question ever really come up? Uh, when is it- when the doctor goes, well listen, um, you've got our son, well we can operate, we can either lose your eyes or your ears, yeah. it's up for you. This, this is never a decision that has to be made by anyone ever in life. It, but go on then, would it, you rather it, be- it, would you rather uh, be blind or deaf? It depends where you live. So. I'm not even sure these are PC terms, blind and deaf anymore. Would you rather use your sense of sight or sight of hearing? Depends, what, depends where you live. What do you mean it depends you where you live? Well, if, if- if say if, uh, Say if you lived in, like, a barren sort of, you know, Africa or whatever, right? right? Now to sea, right? Sure. So, you could lose your, lose your sight. Sure. But, but if you lived in a woman's locker room? Well, if you lived in- you, if you lived <laughs> <laughs> Quite, quite noisy. Yeah, it's quite noisy. Well, like, <laughs> stop banging that door. Yeah, I'll have my sight, lose yeah. my hearing. But, yeah. if it, but if you live in, like, New York, low to sea, but a little bit noisy. Sure. So- Perfect. That is a brilliant answer. <laughs> Unbelievable, <laughs> once again. Can we have monkey news? Oh, I don't know, this this show's like one long monkey news, isn't oh. it? When you're tuning in to hear Carl Pilkington. I don't know, I'll tell you what, why don't we play a little short track? Right, what was your short saying? track? What? Uh, what is it, Steve? It's, it's Green Day. Green Day. Play like. a bit of Green Day, we'll cram in the monkey news. We'll play the ads, Justin's here, that'll be that. Right, Go on. That's what we'll do. And monkey news to come in this fun-packed show. Give us right. the clues, give us the answers. Right, the first one was, why don't you borrow a little bit of land off, uh, off Mr. Boardman, yeah. or Mr. Laurel, or yeah. Mr. Fletcher? Go on, yeah, right? Sure. What am I getting at there? The Stand. initials were LS, yeah. right? Yeah. Lease, lease a Stan's field, right? Because you're borrowing it, that's leasing it. It's Stan, Stan Boardman, Stan Laurel, and, uh, it's a field and that, isn't it? Second one, <laughs> I'm gonna annoy those seabirds. That was B. What are you doing when you're annoying a bird? You're bugging it. What's a seabird? A, a, a gull. Buggle. Buggles. Right? Bug gulls. Uh, I don't- I don't know where to start, mate. Right, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. I don't- it. don't know where to start. A uh, if one. we- if we had more time- <laughs> Don't worry. I'd throw him out of yeah. a window. <laughs> right. What- what the Scouse fella said, 
to the robber <sighs> he found in his house next to his vineyard. Go on, That then. was A W. Yeah. That was A, me wine house. Right? A, 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 me wine house. What? A, A, me wine house. What do you mean wine house? <laughs> it's a vineyard, it's a cottage in a vineyard, so that's what I was going to say. What was it? No, what was the clue again? A, me wine house. Well, yeah, but what do you mean? A, me. What, why is he saying, why is it, why is it a robber? Because the robber's getting in and he's, he's sort of saying, hey. But what's the robber got to do with it? Why is it just a normal bloke? I don't tell you what, why is he saying, hey, me wine house? Why is because he saying he's, that? Because he's saying to him, hey. Get out, can well, no, no, hey, no, 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 I've already heard her name anyway, is A, get out uh, me Winehouse. Her Gavin. name is, uh, no, her name is, is A, uh, get out me Winehouse. Well, Gavin Thompson got him all right, he's in Edinburgh, so he's winning ladder 49 and that, that's safe, that's on the way And he's going it. into the prize draw to win those, right. Right. just do, I mean, this better be a good monkey news, Carl, that's all I can say, because that was drivel. Amy Winehouse. Play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right, there's this monkey, right. Yeah. And it had been, uh, do you know you hear about monkeys being badly treated and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. So, uh, anyway, it goes into this, this home. It's 14, this monkey, it's called, uh, Matty, right? Goes into this home where it's looked after. What um, do you mean home? Just like, uh, just a little monkey home, right? Okay, so, so zoo? Yeah, kind of, yeah, but they haven't mm. got any other monkeys there, right? What have they so got there? They've got just other animals and that, but, but not that many monkeys. But anyway, because, mm. because he's there on his own, Again, you know. When you say monkey, do you mean a chimpanzee, by the way? Because you usually do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I so, can't believe that um, journalist thought this was scripted. Amazing. So, uh, so anyway, yeah. So it gets it gets sort of pally with the people working there and that, and uh, it's smoking fags, it's having a drink at night, and all this. Right. What do you mean it's having a drink at night? How? Huh? <laughs> so yeah, it's all here, Steve. I mean, we haven't really got time, but. Well, no, let's say it's all here, like it's proof. You've got another stupid story that no. someone has put onto the internet. Someone sitting at home in their bedroom mm. has put onto the internet. So he's having a yeah. fag. He's drinking a lovely glass of Bang Rock Station. <laughs> yeah. The wine eaten. that's perfect for a barbecue. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's loving life. It's forgetting about its past and everything, right? When this this other monkey comes along. Oh, oh no! That was brilliant. Go on. Right, that comes in. Something said. <laughs> <laughs> right, forget it. Then. Forget, forget it. No, forget it. Forget no it. Forget it. Well, Vox has no moral, like you know, like barometer. He's just unchained. He's just unchained. He's just. Unchained, it's just an absolute shell of a, of, uh, of a human being. It's just unchained, it's just unchained, it's just he has no emotion, it's just unchained, it's just unchained, 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 Waste of human life, I think, to be honest. What is wrong with him? I don't know. Unchained. I don't know. Unchained. Unchained. He lies a lot. He lies about a lot, a lot of things. Yeah. He lies a lot. He lies about a lot, a lot of things. Yeah, 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 Unchained, 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 filled with hate. Unchained, 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 unchained. Four years ago. Unchained.